Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on conducting an ANOVA with a Dunnett's post hoc test using SPSS. So taking a look at these fictitious data I have loaded in the data view in SPSS, of interest here will be the treatment independent variable. It has four levels, RABT, rational mode of behavior therapy, existential therapy, psychodynamic therapy, and a control group. So the control group represents participants that do not receive any treatment for the duration of the study. And then we have a dependent variable, one dependent variable, named symptoms. And this is a scale variable. It's continuous. And let's assume that this represents a general level of mental health distress with a higher value representing a higher level of distress and a lower value representing a lower value of distress. So as we can see, this meets the criteria for ANOVA. We have, in this case, one independent variable. Uh, this independent variable has four levels. We would need at least one independent variable with two or more levels, so we have that. And it has one dependent variable measured at the continuous level, and we have that as well. So what makes this a good candidate for the Dunnett's post hoc test specifically is that in a study like this, oftentimes we would only really be interested in the difference between one of the treatments and the control group. So we want to know is RABT statistically significantly different than the control group? Is the existential group statistically significantly different than the control group? And are the scores in the psychodynamic level of the independent variable statistically significantly different than the control group? We're not interested in differences between RABT and existential, RABT and psychodynamic, or existential and psychodynamic. So we're not interested in all the pairwise comparisons. We're only interested in the treatment levels compared to the control. So again, this would make these data and our research question suitable for the Dunnett's post hoc test. So before we proceed to the ANOVA with the post hoc test, let's make sure that we've covered the assumptions for ANOVA. Now we do have an independent variable here with four categories and we only need one with two or more so we're good there and of course we have the dependent variable as mentioned measured at the continuous level. ANOVA also assumes independence of observations. There can be no outliers. We need homogeneity of variance and the dependent variable must be normally distributed. So let's first check for outliers and the dependent variable being normally distributed. So we'll go to Analyze, and then Descriptive Statistics, and over to Explore. I'm going to move Symptoms, because that's our dependent variable, over to the Dependent List list box. And then under Plots, I'm going to uncheck Stem and Leaf, but check off Histogram, and add Normality Plots with Tests. Click Continue. No other changes are needed here. Click OK. So here we can see uh, testing the dependent variable symptoms for normality. The Shapiro-Wilk is 0.108. That is not statistically significant. So we're going to assume that this variable is normally distributed. And if we move to the end of the output, we can see we have a box plot. And there are no values plotted below the bottom whisker or above the top whisker of this box plot, so we're going to assume there are no outliers here. Next I'm going to move to Analyze, General Linear Model and Univariate, so this will be to conduct the ANOVA itself. And the independent variable of interest here is Treatment, that's a fixed factor, and then the dependent variable of course is Symptoms. Under Plots, I'm going to move Treatment over to the horizontal axis and add that down. Under post hoc, I'm going to move the independent variable treatment, or as is referred to here, factor, over to post hoc test 4. 
and I'm going to be going to the done it test. As you can see, this is only for these postdoc tests here are only when we have homogeneity of variance, when equal variances are assumed. So that is a condition of interpreting the done it test. You can also see here there's a control category. And from this dialog, you can only specify the first or the last level of the independent variable. Now in this data set, I arranged it so that the control group was the last variable. So I'm just going to leave it as last. And also notice this test has an option of two-sided, less than the control, or greater than the control. So in this case, what we're really looking for is one or more of the treatment levels to be less than the control, for the scores there to be less than the control. Uh, certainly not greater than. Uh, we, wouldn't, we wouldn't be looking for that. And not different in either direction, but specifically less than the control. So I'm going to click the radio button here for uh, less than the control, and then click Continue. And then under Options, I'm going to move Treatment over to Display Means 4. I'm not going to bother with Compare Main Effects because I'm running the uh, Dunnett's test. And then I'm going to add Descriptive Statistics, Estimates of Effect Size, and Homogeneity Tests. And remember, we're going to have to interpret the Homogeneity Test prior to interpreting the Dunnett's test. So I'm going to click Continue. And then I'm going to run the ANOVA by clicking OK. And we can see we have the four levels of the independent variable here in the between subjects factors. Uh, 10 scores for REBT, existential and psychodynamic, and 15 for the control group. We can take a look at the means here and see that the mean scores are lower for the treatment levels and a bit higher for the control group. We do meet the assumption of homogeneity variance because we have a non-statistically significant result for Levine's test. 0.629 is greater than 0.05. So that is not statistically significant. Moving down to the tests of between subjects effects. Now in ANOVA, generally we can't move forward to the post hoc tests unless we have a statistically significant result uh, in the test of between subjects effects. So here we'd be looking for a p-value of less than 0.05. As you can see for treatment, which is the variable of interest here, it's 0.051. So it is not statistically significant. However, when interpreting the results of a Dunnett's test, you can do so whether you have a statistically significant result here or not. It does not matter we would still proceed to interpreting the results from the Dunnett's test. So moving down to multiple comparisons, we can see we have Dunnett and less than control. So we can see uh, between RABT and the control group, we have a statistically significant difference. 0.017 is less than 0.05. Similarly, for existential compared to control, we're at 0.046, that is statistically significant, but between psychodynamic and control it is 0.161, which is not statistically significant. So again, notice that the only comparisons that are made here are the treatment levels compared to the control. The treatment levels are not compared to one another. And then moving down to the plot that I specified in the ANOVA dialog, you can see the mean scores here for RABT. We have, uh, that's the lowest, right? That's the lowest mean scores here. The next is existential, psychodynamic, and control is up here a bit. However, in this case, of course, we're only interested in the differences between RABT and the control, existential and control, and psychodynamic and the control group. I hope you found this video on performing an ANOVA with a Dunnett's post hoc test in SPSS to be useful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me 
and I'll be happy to assist you.